the reality of what we have to do. And, and I've started this process. We all have to do it. You have to move your money, get it out of these multinational banks that are, listen, if you want to understand what happened in Egypt, Egypt, what happened in Egypt, Tunisia, Syria, all these places, it's directly related to what happened on Wall Street because the commodities market zoomed up because all the real estate was collapsing and so they start putting their money into commodities, commodities go up and suddenly the Egyptian who was paying 25% of his income for food is now paying 45% of his income for food and he can't afford it and they're literally starving. This is happening in many, many places around the world. People are suffering from this unjust economic system that has to be identified. The culprits behind it need to be identified because these are real people. They have names and they're doing things that are completely immoral. They're doing things that are absolutely immoral and we are all suffering from it. Canada has been spared a lot of this uh, egregiousness because there were much better fiscal policies here, but don't think that you're free from it. And the other thing is, if we go, you go. So you better hope that because 80% of your economy is tied to our economy, and you should know that. So don't get high and mighty. Like we, we, I put maple syrup, I use it on my oatmeal. Canada, imported. So I'm supporting Canadian economy in my own house. What you can do is move your money, but that's only a temporary solution. Muslims need to develop their own banking systems. Anybody can open a bank if they have a charter. It's not hard to do. And banking is the biggest scam that's ever been perpetrated on people. Really, if you understand banking, you will be amazed at what they get away with because this is the only private company that can create money out of nothing. We all have to earn our money. They just literally created out of nothing. And so you need to understand, we as, as a community need to open banks, but they can't be like some of these shifty, shady things that are going on, Sharia compliant, quote unquote, right? And Canada has already tasted the, the bitter brunt of that, all right? So we have to really, we have our own banks. The other thing that we can do, we have over 50,000 doctors in the United States of America, and you've got many Muslim doctors, 50,000 Muslim doctors. And I've said this before, but when an when American comedian on national TV said, I went to my doctor and he said, face Mecca and cough, and everybody in the audience laughed, you know that Muslim doctors are having an impact on this society. People put their lives in the hands of Muslim doctors every day. Muslim doctors are paying hundreds of millions of dollars in insurance every month. Who are they paying it to? They're paying it to Blue Cross. I thought we didn't believe in crosses. Really, they're paying it to Mutual Insurance. They're paying it to all these companies. We have a system called Tikaful which is superior to this insurance system where you actually, you're investing your money. And then if something happens, then the money comes out of that. This is a superior system. You would get people from other faiths and, and non-faith people, they would want to be part of this because they wouldn't be just losing their money every month, but getting something back. We need Muslim insurance companies. All you people in here are paying auto insurance. Where's the Muslim insurance company? That could be a non-profit insurance company. That could be giving back to the community. Where is it? Where's our creativity? Why aren't we thinking economically? We're literally spending, we are, we are spending so much money on these societies and what are we getting back for it? Reasonably good governance, pretty good roads, you know, good amenities, nice municipalities, but much of it is being squandered on companies that are doing terrible things. They really are. And if you read the fine print in a lot of these insurance companies, it's amazing what they get away with. All you have to look is what happened to the people in Katrina who didn't, they had, they had insurance against hurricanes, but because the dam broke, they blamed it on the dam and said, oh, it wasn't the hurricane. And people lost their houses. I mean, this is the type, this is totally unethical. The Quran is about giving people respite until things are easier for them. Muslims don't foreclose homes. Really, bank robbers don't chase people out of their homes, but bankers do. 
Really. It's, it's amazing what they get away with. Woody Guthrie, the great American poet, said, some will rob you with a fountain pen, some with a six gun and some with a fountain pen. I mean, people were completely robbed. All these securitized loans, derivatives, packed in, and they were robbing everybody. It wasn't just the people that were signing those deeds. They were robbing the fireman's insurance, the teacher's insurance, people's 401ks, all these people that thought their retirement were in AAA loans, standards and poor, all these, these people that are giving them AAA loans, and it wasn't AAA loans. And then they were betting against themselves. This is what was going on, complete unethical behavior. Now, if you look, Spinoza said that greed, avarice, and covetousness are species of madness. They're types of madness. We, we forget that, that these people are actually insane. And yet we give money. Allah says, Don't give idiots your wealth. Don't give idiots your wealth. Allah says this in the Quran. Do not give your wealth to people that will misuse your wealth. We are empowering them with every check we write. With every time you use that credit card. Use cash. Don't give them that 4%. Why, why, why should some middleman, some sara, they're trying to eliminate cash. Who wants to eliminate cash? The bankers do because they'll get 4% of every human transaction. Don't let them do that. Start using cash. But that's only a temporary solution. We need to recognize that commodity-backed wealth is the only sound form of wealth. Commodity-backed wealth is the only sound form of wealth. They will argue, and let me tell you something about uh, uh, economics majors. Economics majors go through a brainwashing program. Seriously, because they come out of it with all these ideas. And if you try to say something like, uh, you know, we need to get back to a bimetal economy. Oh, no, that's, that's passe. They got rid of that. It was, it was a bad system. It doesn't work. Who said it doesn't work? It worked for thousands of years. Human beings traded in gold and silver for thousands of years. Gold rarely inflates. It inflates when, when new mines are discovered, but there's only about a 2% increase in gold every year. So it's, it's very minimal. But look at the inflation that your money is having. You know, Robert Frost wrote a poem that he never published about currency. He, and, and, and that poem, he said, uh, the pain of seeing ten, five cent, 10 cents turn to five. We clutch fiercely at the part we think we feel it in. The head, the heart. Is someone cutting us in two alive? Is someone at us cutting us in half? We cast a dangerous look from where we lie up to the enthroned kings of earth and sky. They know too well what's good for them to laugh. Right? He was talking about inflation. 1919, inflation. When Woodrow Wilson, to pay for all the war problems, printed up all of this money, inflating the currency and paying. That's why do you think the Chinese are angry? Because they're seeing all of that money that they're holding is being inflated. They know what's happening. There's a book recently out called Currency Wars, threatening about the collapse of the dollar. And the fact that we're in a currency war. If you, what's going on in Europe is a currency war against the euro. The euro is being destroyed. The yen, the dollar, the euro, the mark, these are the global currencies. And this is happening all around us. And yet we remain oblivious to it because these currencies are fiat currencies that have no intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is in gold and silver. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, gold and silver, it was a 10 to 1 ratio. At the beginning of America's bimetal economy, it was a 14 to 1 ratio under Hamilton. In 1873, they prohibited silver as a, a monetary uh, means of transaction. Why did they prohibit silver? Because the bankers knew that there's more silver than gold. They wanted payment in gold because farmers and poor people could pay with silver and, and it was like having an easier way of paying off their debts. And so they actually outlawed silver in the United States.